Clarification, the seven members that are on the DDA should just go through or on top of that as a volunteer, is that correct? And, and if you could, just for a point of clarification, is there, for, is there a fee for the people that are in the DDA? And, is, and what, if, if any, downside do you really see or conclusion? Mr. Campbell, there's no fee for being inside the DEA. My name is Jim Blanton. I live in 628 East Coast Drive. Uh, I likewise also feel this uh, quantity of land in the thing is quite big to be manageable. But I've touched on that already. Uh, my question deals with also the, the uh, authority membership as a volunteer. But as far as uh, benefits or having a staff pay for the uh, salaries, etc., for that. We won't have a staff. It'll be all volunteer. And the biggest question I have really involves uh, uh, the tax issue. The way I read this uh, frequently asked questions, uh, is, it, is there a way where these obligations that the DDA takes on, uh, the debt, bond, or otherwise, gets eventually transferred to the taxpayer that doesn't even live in the position? No. Any debt of the authority is payable by the authority. Uh, now, well, I mean, there's multiple kinds of debt, but let's say the bond, the authority issues bonds. The authority is responsible for funding those particular bonds. That um, it's not a debt, but it's not a public debt of the of the city. Does that answer your question? Well. So the individual agree. taxpayers are not responsible for paying for making the bond. The way this thing reads, uh, it says, uh, any special district created within the area of operation of the DDA can be defined as a city council to exist, but does not have to lie along the same line. Which implies to me, I, I could be misreading this, that although the DDA area has occurred something, they could reach out to non-residents or businesses or parcels or land that's not in the district to tax. Okay, if there's some bad debts here, we've got to pay off. You got it, that was the deficit. No, you're talking about two separate things, but let's talk about a special tax district for just a second. A special tax, tax, tax district can be created within the defined development area. Only and, within the defined area. And a tax would only be levied against properties in that defined area. And to go further, the tax that's collected can only be used for a project that specifically benefits that specific that particular area. You cannot make the downtown people pay more taxes to fund overall city operations. So a special tax district is a very focused tax tax levied on a certain area for projects within that very certain area. Um, so it's really, so does that kind of, does that clarify for you? I'm concerned with eventually, the bad, if, if there were any bad investments to come back to Hollis, people outside the district have to pay the bill. Now the authority would generate funds the same way as a regular business. You've heard discussion of projects where the, where the authority buys a building, rehabs it. So what if the DDA to rehab it. I'm sorry. What if the DDA folds and it has debt it incurred but it can't pay? There, what happens to that debt? Well, the, the DDA would be borrowing money just like any other borrower. It what would have to allow it. pay it back? Well, the, the DDA, the asset. Where does, the where does it go from that point? Well, You've been having so much of the mic now. You can't understand. 
let's give an example. The, the, the BDA buys a building, borrows money to rehab it, leases it to a tenant. It uses the lease payments to pay off the debt. If for some reason that project goes south, that loan is secured by the building. Just like if your business borrowed money, if you borrowed money through your business to, buy, to build whatever, an office, a garage, the, the, the debt would be secured by whatever collateral the lender took, be the, be the assets of the authority. So if the authority didn't pay it, the lender would foreclose on that asset, and that would be, that would be it. The, the real, I'm probably not the best qualified person to make this analogy, but a, somebody correct me if I'm wrong, but an authority is essentially acting as a developer. I mean, it can own property, it can buy, sell, borrow money. And so, you know, a lender that's lending money to an authority is going to treat the authority just like any other borrower. And they're only going to give them money if they feel like they're fully secure. They've got collateral to back up the loan. Is that, is that helpful? 